What is going on, everybody? Paul here, coming at you with an informal video, a segment that we have not tried before. I figured, since I just woke up and I'm checking out the news, I would let you all kind of do a little ride along with me and observe what I do to aggregate all of these buku amounts of news articles and information to bring them succinctly in a crypto coffee update to you. Maybe something you find interesting. Nonetheless, I'll show you some of my resources and what I do. First things first, like I said, I just woke up. Simultaneous sip. It's the only way to start a day. Nice, hot, fresh cup of coffee. All right, what we see here today is the markets, total market caps, 264 billion. 24-hour uh, volume is a more indicative metric, in my opinion. 12 million. Bitcoin dominance, 45%. Cool, looking pretty standard. I kind of saw that coming, small bounce. Biggest gainer at the moment is storage with this completely sustainable right angle going straight up. And biggest loser is Kin Token, which is a eh, mere 5.5%, nothing too bad. Veritasium, we've seen a lot of interesting oscillation in Veritasium popping up and down between like 90 and 200 and something. So that's been an interesting coin. One of Cliff High's favorites. If you know who that guy is, he's worth checking out. Anyway, let's get into the news. Crypto Panic. Man, I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite resources for news of all time instead of having like a rss feed if i believe that's what it's called where they just pull all of the uh, news articles from a specific site uh, with no consideration as to whether or not they're of quality or not this kind of allows you to do that only specify what coins you want to look at you see over on the right hand side and also let you know you know if you want to filter out let's say i don't like crypto vest for whatever reason i can filter that out but i do like crypto vest so it remains for the time being but either way just a quick crash course i love this thing it's fantastic and you can see all the news articles here uh let's see we're gonna start out with this one this one's pretty big I do now believe that a fixed supply is worth considering, said the Canadian-Russian cryptocurrency giant Vitalik Buterin. So it looks like ETH may be receiving a hard cap somewhere around 120 million Ethereum tokens, which is pretty cool. Uh, this comes on the heels as they transition from their proof-of-work to a hybrid proof-of-work, proof-of-stake model. Uh, there's been a lot of drama going along with that. I'm not fully abreast and up-to-date to, of every element of what's going on there. Uh, it's pretty pretty technical stuff obviously a lot of economic interests are aligned and malaligned leading to a lot of variations of the narrative as to what's happening but suffice to say they are switching over from proof of work to a hybrid proof of work proof of stake that's pretty cool and uh best of luck to them as that as that goes it's going to be interesting to see how that um how that works out and it's happening as eos kind of eases into the scene so it's uh it's gonna be an interesting time for ethereum truly i recently was using the ethereum name system and i gotta tell you guys i think it's complicated if they can find a way to streamline that it may accelerate adoption but yeah it's a little bit off topic another awesome article i saw i'm going to use this kind of as a highlight for a broader concept that's related to some more news we saw uh, new zealand's becoming a global blockchain center apparently uh, i don't hear much about new zealand in terms of blockchain so this kind of caught me off guard i really don't know much going on in terms of crypto down there what i do know is they have some glaciers that are beginning to develop so it's a favorable environment in terms of being able to cool mining hardware we saw that kind of thing occur in canada where the city of quebec was approached uh, being the St. Lawrence River, a lot of cryptocurrency companies were like, hey, can we use this river for hydroelectric and can we use your cold climate to cool our mining facilities? Apparently Quebec said, eh, maybe they're kind of in limbo still. A lot of people said no, some people said yes. Point of the matter being, places like this are attractive. Keep in mind Canada, Switzerland, etc. So not too much of a surprise, but kind of a breaking of the silence more so. Uh, turns out Kiwis, I love that they're called Kiwis, Kiwis involved included the 2017 New Zealand Chief Executive of the Year Award winner, Leia Flounders, New Zealand Tech and FinTech New Zealand Chair Mitchell Pham, and Blockchain Labs New Zealand Chief Executive Mark Pascal. So some names I'm not right off the bat familiar with, but nonetheless it seems to be that there's a budding blockchain economy coming out of the small island nation of New Zealand. So that could be a huge economic boom. A lot of the times these island nations, uh, you know, proportionate to their size and their natural resources, of which New Zealand has a good amount, they tend to look towards alternative income options. So, for instance, Hong Kong, they want to have a lot of, a lot of favorable regulation in terms of commerce because they don't have a lot of natural, uh, natural land or natural resources to exploit, so they need to have some way 
to have an income. So this, this can really be helpful for island nations specifically. And being New Zealand's a pretty big island, it might not help them as much as it would help Hong Kong proportionally, but interesting to see. The point I wanted to highlight with this article is that New Zealand's a Western nation, of course, and it's really interesting to see that they're breaking the silence on a global scale at this time on the heels of other major Western powers kind of doing the same. You, you remember France in a recent Crypto Coffee update I mentioned. France made an announcement, the finance minister did at least. He says he wants to turn France, the entire country, but Paris specifically, into an ICO hub. So uh, is this sort of admission of, hey, this is new technology and we want to attract it because of the economic benefits it could bring to our respective locale, that seems to be a, a feature that works similar to, as economic tariffs. We recently saw uh, President Trump slap some tariffs on China, uh, steel, and China returned fire by tariffing wine and some other stuff. So what happens when you impose tariffs is the other nation that you're tariffing tendentially wants to level the playing field so you kind of have a return fire kind of when one when one nation blinks the others have to do the same thing so the global economy can remain in relative lockstep with one another um, so what you're seeing here is france doing exactly that they kind of moved first and said hey we're interested in this cryptocurrency and ico kind of business we're interested in this emerging technology we want to make france the big boys now this comes on the heels of Switzerland saying a similar thing. Switzerland's been doing it for a long while now. We remember the Tezos ICO was launched in Zug. Where is it at? Yeah, Zug-based Tezos ICO. Raised $232 million. So huge amounts of money being raised coming out of Switzerland. They want to have a cryptocurrency hub as well. But Switzerland, of course, kind of does its own thing. They're not part of the... Uh, they're, they're an observer of the United Nations. They're not part of NATO, the EU, anything like that. They're their own little island banking paradise, essentially. So it makes sense that they would do things a bit untraditionally and be approaching the cryptocurrency scene with kind of a, a fresh pair of lenses, um, unbri unbridled by the whole European Union situation. But nonetheless, it's interesting to see them kind of flexing that position. You know, they want to go towards blockchain, now France wants to go, New Zealand wants to go. We remember Malta, I mentioned Hong Kong. Malta's a small island nation as well, only on the European continent. They don't have a lot of natural water, not really great agricultural land, not too, too much going on. They're not an economic powerhouse, we'll say that much. Welcoming Binance to the island could be a huge economic boon. Even if the taxes are marginally lower on Malta, they're getting a huge boon from the amount of commerce that's flowing through Binance's coffers. So it's a win-win situation. Regulation favorable to Binance, plus an injection of capital for the fledgling island nation. Maybe not fledgling, they've been around for a while, Knights of Malta and all that. But point of the matter being, this further illustrates the point. When you see one nation move a particular direction with regulation, you begin to see that geographical region, or at least that culture, cultural slash geographical region, kind of shift simultaneously. Not in perfect lockstep, but generally it's a leading indicator for future developments in the news, if that makes sense. Same thing we can see here. Belarus, even the Eastern Bloc reacts accordingly. They actually said no crypto taxes until 2023. Fine, 2023. Yeah, January 1st, 2023. That's great. So yeah, no taxes, incentives to come to the Belarusian technology park. The same thing. Belarus is a relatively poor nation, uh, ex-Soviet Union. They, they need economic injection. This is the way to do it. Make it attractive for businesses. And of course, same thing. This isn't, this isn't the article I needed. This isn't what I wanted. What is cryptocurrency? How does it work? Why do we use it? That's, that's too abstract. Anyway, I have an article about Russia that I had pulled up. Essentially, the hotels for the World Cup in Kaliningrad are going to be accepting Bitcoin, which couldn't be happening without at least the tacit approval of the Russian government. So you're seeing an informal nod of approval on the part of Russia as well. So geographical regions moving in lockstep together. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. All right, so what else is going on in the news today? Oh, another thing I like about uh, Crypto Panic is you see these little icons. The green arrow up means bullish, red arrow down means bearish, and they have a like and dislike button to kind of partition whether you emotionally like something or whether it's actually going to have a bullish or bearish implication on the news. So that's pretty cool. And generally, you see things like, hey, interest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency jobs peaked in December 2017. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. That's not too surprising per se. Uh, most people who would be doing kind of on-the-fly searches for cryptocurrency jobs without doing, you know, adequate amounts of scaffolding and research and getting an idea of what kind of specifications the field needs, where they could provide value, 
it seems that most people who look for those kind of things on the fly really are just looking for those kind of things on the fly. They're not actually trying to provide a huge amount of value to grow the space sustainably. They just want to get into cool, new, hot, cheap, fresh, cool thing that their friends told them about. Oh man, it's going to be so cool. I'm going to get businesses to adopt blockchain because blockchain is like, it's like a bank, but safe. It's, it's like smart and cool. And any self-respecting company isn't just going to hire some, like, 19 to 25-year-old kid who's just derping around about just uh, buzzwords, buzzwords, buzzwords. You, you either have to know how to implement the technological component of these kind of things, or you need to work with a company that either A, represents a specific cryptocurrency company with uh, business blockchain solutions, something like Ardor, which is owned by the Jello Rita company, um, something like, I guess, the Ethereum Foundation, maybe, they don't do too much onboarding for businesses from what I've seen, or something like Stratus, which actually deals in business blockchain solutions. So without even having that foreknowledge, I'd assume, more than 50% of people are just kind of looking for Bitcoin jobs. Yeah, look, they're looking for Bitcoin jobs. How do you get a job in Bitcoin? Well, I guess you could write for Bitcoin.com, but like, where do you work? Oh, I work in Bitcoin. Oh, that's awesome. What do you do? I, I hodl. <laughs> wow. What's the job description? I don't do anything. And when the market goes down, I eat ramen. Uh, that's pretty much the job description for a job in Bitcoin. But anyway, just kind of a funny article I wanted to bring up. More news. Always more news. Oh, Taiwan Central Bank proposes money laundering rules for Bitcoin. I kind of touched on that in another Crypto Coffee update. I think it's really funny that, that they're obsessively just lording over money laundering when in all reality it's it's pretty negligible uh mo most money laundering in crypto from my understanding is is done with coins like monero or zcoin or zcash uh, something with a privacy component if you're going to launder money and you're going to use digital assets generally you're, you're going to kind of think privacy in mind and not to mention the recent article with the uh nsa is tracking all bitcoin transactions that is something that is happening Here's a post on Steam about it. Whee! Yep, NSA tracking all Bitcoin transactions. Uh, this has to do with the hashing algorithm and also how they can basically web everything together. Great article. I link it, I'll link it below in the description. You can get an idea for yourself exactly how the NSA and other large aggregates can use their technology. Oop. Anyway, you can check this out for yourself down in the description. You can get an idea of exactly how uh, this kind of censorship and tracking occurs and how... Essentially, it acts like a honeypot. Uh, Tor, for instance, the Tor network, which uses onion routing. Uh, everybody who developed onion routing was apparently on the government's payroll, whether it's CIA, FBI, NSA. And so what they did is they developed a honeypot, and it, it just didn't end well. Essentially, it, it seems a bit erroneous that government regulation would be sufficient to curve money laundering when the technological means exist to just simply obfuscate where the money is going or who owns it by using even more advanced technology it just doesn't seem reasonable it seems more of a it's more of a justification for passing regulations to push people who are law-abiding citizens into proper channels that could be tracked by the government just just my two cents on the issue nonetheless alternatively it's interesting to see a nod of approval from the government. At least they're kind of establishing the precedents that most regular people are used to seeing. So even if they're complacent with the government having a bit of intrusion into this fledgling space, perhaps it will also accelerate adoption, thereby allowing a nice kind of meet in the middle with a, a minimal amount of regulation as the technology kind of matures. See how long I've been going on here. All right, I'm going on 14 minutes. I think you guys got a pretty good idea of what's going on in the news. Like I said, Crypto Panic's one of my favorite sites, but uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this kind of content, if you think I'm just kind of rambling like a madman, it's up to you. Like, share, subscribe. Love you guys, and I'll talk to you next time.